How prepared are you for the future of transportation? China is planning to invest $200 billion into its high-speed rail network. More cities will be linked, transportation will be more efficient, and carbon emissions will be cut because of this vast investment. China's high-speed rail network is the world's largest and most modern, with speeds of up to 217 miles per hour. It does more than only replace air travel, it also connects important cities. In this video, we will take a closer look at China's high-speed rail expansion plan, the technology behind it, and its potential impact on the future of transportation. Join us as we explore the possibilities of faster and more efficient travel. Trains in this vast country move slowly, making even short excursions like Shanghai to Beijing difficult. It's changed. The most populous nation has the most comprehensive high-speed rail network. Since 2008, 37,900 kilometers, 23,500 miles of lines connecting megacity clusters have been completed. In the last five years, we've opened half of that amount, and in 2021, we'll open 3,700 more. The network's length is expected to double to 70,000 kilometers by 2035. Lines exceeding 350 kilometers per hour, 217 miles per hour, have replaced airplanes on major intercity routes. As of 2020, high-speed rail had been built in 75% of China's megacities with populations of 500,000 or more. With slightly over 2,000 kilometers of dedicated lines built for operation at over 250 kilometers per hour, Spain lags well behind the rest of the world despite having Europe's most extensive high-speed network and ranking second worldwide. Currently, the United States has only one rail route that, almost, qualifies as high-speed, and the United Kingdom has only 107 kilometers, Amtrak's Northeast Corridor, where Acela trains reach 240 kilometers per hour on expensively reconstructed sections of the railway shared with commuter and freight trains. China wants to make high-speed rail the preferred method of domestic long-distance travel, but these new lines also symbolize the country's rising economic dominance. Like the Shinkansen in the 1960s, they represent Japan's economic power, fast modernization, technological advancement, and increasing wealth. China's Communist Party and leader Xi Jinping regard high-speed rail as a powerful tool for social cohesion, political influence, and the integration of numerous regional cultures. African Studies says, the development of these new trains is part of Xi Jinping's overall ambition of integrating the large national market SOS. It illustrates his new development concept of integrated development. His ambitious proposal links both current metropolitan centers and new megacities. She loves the Xiongin New Area in Hebei Province, 90 kilometers, 55 miles, southwest of Beijing. China is repeating railway history since many early railways in North America, Europe, and European empires had similar goals. Russia, especially the Trans-Siberian Railway, Prussia, France, Italy, and the British Empire expanded their railway networks for political, military, and commercial reasons. China is doing in a few years what it took the West decided to do in the 19th and early 20th centuries. The man in seat 61, travel expert Mark Smith, claims the Chinese have developed an extraordinary high-speed rail network that is frequently faster and undoubtedly more dependable than Chinese domestic airlines. One reviewer was amazed by the scale of some of the new stations and the system's effectiveness in moving large numbers of people, everyone with a reserved seat and increasingly without paper tickets, only a scan of an ID card or passport at the ticket gates. China's network was created utilizing European and Japanese high-speed technology. Bombardier, Alstom, and Mitsubishi were eager to collaborate, given the size of the new market and China's lofty aspirations. Over the past decade, due to increased infrastructure investment, indigenous businesses have become global leaders in high-speed rail technology and engineering. Due to China's size and diverse climate, railway engineers encounter many challenges. China's engineers have quickly mastered navigating railways over, under, and through any terrain, from the sometimes cold Harbin in the far north to the Pearl River Delta Megalopolis near tropical humidity to the 1,776 km Lanzhou Yurumqi line through the Gobi Desert. Despite centralized governmental funding, planning, and permission, China has built new lines without concern for existing communities along their course. China's high-speed growing pains contributed to the July 2011 Wenzhou disaster. Two trains slammed on a viaduct, derailed, and sent four coaches tumbling to the floor below, killing 40 and injuring roughly 200. The catastrophe shattered public trust in high-speed rail, halting future line construction until an official inquiry was finished. 
After 10 years, the network has had no significant issues, and passenger numbers have skyrocketed. Statistics may be astonishing compared to conventional railway construction projects. The 815-kilometer Zhengzhou East Wanzhou Railway cost $13.5 billion and took five years to build. After the Shuzhoulian Yungan Line opened in February, a non-stop 3,490-kilometer high-speed rail route connected Jiangsu Province to Yurumqi in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Trains now travel the 1,700-kilometer Beijing Harbin route in under five hours at 340 kilometers per hour. By late 2020, China National Railways ran nearly 9,600 high-speed trains, including the first high-speed overnight sleeper services on select long-distance routes. On interminable concrete viaducts, more than 80% of the track in some portions is raised over highly inhabited areas and significant agricultural land. More than 110-kilometer tunnels and spectacular longspan bridges have been built across natural obstacles like the Yangtze River. Chinese companies pioneered driverless railway operation and advanced signaling and control systems, not just braking speed, endurance, and civil engineering records. China's bullet trains between Beijing and Zhangjiago in northern Hebei province are the world's fastest autonomous trains, hitting 350 miles per hour, kilometers per hour. The new route debuted in December 2019 for the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympic and Paralympic Games and shortened the 174-kilometer travel to under an hour. 45-Minute Fast Trains The line was built in four years and had 11 stations, two of which serve Winter Games locations, and one, at Beidaling Changchang, speeds up Great Wall of China tourists. It's the world's deepest high-speed rail station at 102 meters, 335 feet. The driverless train's passenger saloons contain space for ski gear, 5G touchscreen control panels, intelligent lighting, thousands of safety sensors, and wheelchair-accessible seats. Facial recognition and robots help travelers with directions, bags, and check-in. The high-speed network's significant city's new stations look like airline terminals, with acres of polished marble and glass, massive information screens, and lounges where passengers wait for their train. No waiting on cold platforms. China has established a high-speed network throughout the country while the UK bickers over high-speed too, says railway expert Smith. Once booked, a swipe of your ID card or passport at the ticket gates is all you need to travel on China's high-speed lines. This is relentless efficiency. As he puts it, fares can be had for as little as $13. Some of the future of rail travel in China and beyond can be seen in the new Olympic line, but technological limits are also being pushed in other areas. CRRC, a state-owned Chinese rail engineering giant, previewed a 400 km per hour international high-speed electric train prototype in early 2021. It can operate between minus 50 and 50 degrees Celsius and has wheelsets that can be swapped to fit a broader track gauge, so it can drive directly into Russia, Mongolia, and Kazakhstan, which use a different standard than China's 1,435 mm. Switching meters would allow direct trains between India and Pakistan via Myanmar and Bangladesh, a more ambitious ambition. The question is, what happens next? Laos China Railway, a $5.3 billion project set to open by the end of 2021, is just one example of how the country plans to expand into its neighbors. Although it's not a bullet train, the new 257-mile line significantly expands Chinese railway dominance by enhancing connections between southern China and Vientiane, the capital of Laos. The Bangkok section of a railway that would extend south to Singapore is also currently under construction. Now that its domestic market is maturing, CRRC has its sights set on billions of dollars in annual exports to other parts of the world. China is heavily investing in rail infrastructure to achieve its ambitious Belt and Road Initiative goals of expanding its influence across Asia and Europe and Africa. According to Jian Wei Zhang, president of Bombardier Transportation China, the high-speed network has delivered greater mobility and prosperity to the public. This is from a statement made in 2020. Improved trade routes for Chinese exports are just one benefit of the proposed new railways that would cross the Himalayas to India and Pakistan or reach into Russia and the former Soviet states of the Central Asian republics, which would bring enormous contracts and challenges to China's rail and civil engineering conglomerates. These initiatives, backed by investment money and loans, help cement China's status as a regional superpower and further draw emerging nations into China's economic orbit. Chung speculates that the most intriguing aspect of the Belt and Road Initiative is how Beijing will systematically link together the domestic railway networks. 
while the BRI is an advanced grand strategy, concerns about China's true motives are growing. Some of the problems with the BRI, such as the fact that some nations are backing out of or suspending their BRI contracts with China, have yet to be discussed openly. They fear losing control of vital assets if they fail on their Chinese debts. Sichuan's provincial capital Chengdu and western Tibet near the Indian border would be connected by a $965 kilometer route unveiled in November 2020 and cost $48 billion. The Les Zyges railway extension that opened in 2014 is seen as a stepping stone toward the eventual completion of a route to Kathmandu, Nepal. As China's most significant regional and economic adversary, India views these activities with distrust, heightening tensions across the border. China is investing considerable sums in maglev, magnetic levitation, technology, allowing passenger services to run at speeds of up to 620 km per hour, much above the current limits of steel wheels on steel rails. Shanghai Hangzhou in Zhujiang province and an underground 110-kilometer route between Guangzhou and Shenzhen, the two main cities in the densely populated Pearl River Delta region, are the two lines under development. The latter will reach Kowloon, Hong Kong, a former British colony. The German-backed Shanghai Airport Maglev Line opened in 2003, inspiring these projects. China prefers Maglev over the height but untested Hyperloop for long-distance rail air connections. This is it, everyone. So, what do you think? Leave a comment and let us know. Thank you for watching the video. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you still need to. Also, put on the notifications because the following video is going to be a great one.